Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here, and welcome back to another day in paradise talking about finance and economics. So, first of all, the general markets are doing pretty good, actually, reporting some real solid gains, as can be seen at the top right here. SP is up about 10%, NASDAQ up 8%, crude oil 2%. And I guess most things are doing really, really quite juicy right now, as we can see from most of the indices. Now, before we get into today's video, make sure you press the like button on this video to show your support, because there's no advertisements. I mean, that's worth a like, I think. And also make sure you subscribe so you're notified for any time I upload another piece of financial or economic news. First of all, Three reasons why Bitcoin price is bullish right now. And actually, the reason I put this in, even though it's talking about Bitcoin, is more so because of the content of the article, not so much because of Bitcoin specifically. Because basically, there's a couple of really important things going on right now, which are real game changers, I would say, to the whole economy. First of all, Congress discuss digital dollar by Fed to fight crisis. The second one is the Fed pumping unlimited cash for stocks. Bitcoin reacts or for stocks and a couple other things and Bitcoin could react to that. And the third is that China has almost beaten COVID potential cure tested worldwide. Now, these three things have a lot to do with the general economy. They, of course, have to do with, I guess, fighting crisis. They have to do with general economics, just like the traditional stocks and whatnot, and they have to do with crypto. And the reason I thought it was really important to cover in this video and at least mention a couple of the real, I guess, biggest, biggest catalyst of, of financial, I guess, volatility right now is again, for exactly that. It, it's causing great volatility, great disruptions in the, the, the normal way of living. And that's also the most interesting things to talk about. So, one of the talks that's been going around is a digital dollar. Now, what they've kind of stated and what I fetched from this is that Congress is discussing the possibility of getting these bills out there in a digital manner because sending paychecks or what, whatever, something like that, would take so long that it, it wouldn't really help with the whole problem. It would only maybe ease the pain a little bit and in the end that's not what they want they want to ease the pain as much as they can not a little bit and so that's an interesting part of it all second is the fed pumping unlimited cash what well, we talked about that in yesterday's video and third is that china of course for bitcoin specifically is is a really good country right in terms of bitcoin um mining power and now that there was a sickness, a lot of people wouldn't go to work. A lot of people are halting things. And for the general economy, same thing goes. A lot of people are staying home from their work in isolation in China. And a lot of things are taking extra time, right? Most things are still getting done, but it's taking a little bit extra time. And once all these people recover and the whole guess, disease and, and pandemic is fixed and over, yeah, I think we'll all see a lot more participation and see the economy pick back up from the east on out. Sky News, the CV, Wage Rose and Little deploy two-meter marshals and checkout screens as contactless limit to be raised. Two things I want to say with this one. First off, it's that most countries are right now doing a little bit of, of, of this situation where they are doing a like two-meter or one-and-a-half-meter out of each other um, type of deal. But the second part is actually a little bit more interesting when talking about the, the financial aspect of things, because it kind of feels like I'm doing a COVID podcast or things like that, because that's mostly what we talk about here. But again, you can understand why, because the, 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 the things that are happening because of this are, are just insane. You know, the, um, I don't know, not, not the cause, but the, the, the opposite of cause. I don't know English, guys. I don't, English is not my first language. But what I want to say with the second part here is that contactless payments right now in the Netherlands here are, I think, about 25 euros if you want to pay just once. And I think with time, and they're, they they have it low deliberately, because if you have it above 25, people could really fetch a lot of money if they just stole your card, right? So they really chose 25 for a good reason. But now since most people have to stay home, right, so they're not using or losing their cards, 
and people don't really want to stick their fingers anymore against the, the pad, I think it would be a good idea to raise those limits as well. I think it would be a good idea as well. I definitely think so. And I think that's also things that are about to be coming. A lot more ways and, and measures are going to be taken, I think, to do everything online so or do everything contactless so you don't have to physically touch anything or touch each other. I think that's another amazing part of the world that's that's coming up here, which could also save a lot of infections in the future. Maybe not necessarily for this COVID, but in the future maybe. And also it could just spread general um, spending or it could up spending in the end. FTSE 100 on the rise as US markets open higher. So yes, this morning, all markets opened ridiculously high. It's pretty happy to see. And yeah, everything's doing pretty good right now. It's, it's, it's simple to conclude, basically. Like, it's not that. It's it's like spread. It's Everything's doing really good. So I don't think it's that difficult. The only big question is, is it just going to be a little bit of a, of a trap to lure some bulls in and then crush them? Or is this the big recovery? You know, we don't know. One of the big things I would add to this is that right now, I believe a lot of Americans have have lost their faith <laughs> uh, in the economy. And I also believe that today was, again, another record day for amount of people hit with this whole virus thing, right? So this is kind of telling me that it's going to become a lot lower. But looking at the numbers, it's, it's not really looking like it too much, so... It really has me still in a little bit of a of an in-between point, and I'm not going to make too many words following it because I just don't know the official answer. Virus outbreak puts Britain on course for recession not seen in modern history, as data shows pubs and restaurants suffered even before full lockdown. So more countries and more countries are now doing full lockdown mode, and really it's putting a lot of countries in a really, really bad position because... People are not really spending their money too much. They might spend it on some online restaurants, you know, or, or like um, delivery. And they might spend it on some clothes and then some small things. But generally, when times are depressed, people like to save their money. And people don't like to really spend it. <laughs> and once you're incentivizing people to also stay inside, you're making them double spend or double save it up. right? And in the end, really, really not spend it. And what that does is it just gets the prices of things lower in the end because you want people to spend more right and then the whole circle goes around but one thing you're you're kind of not putting in there what's not really helping there is that whatever you do people can't go outside to spend more so everything's just going to go to shizzle right and people can't go work anymore so people are not going to be producing more and you're just going to get a maybe maybe you'll get an equilibrium again because the production will be so low but it will be such a bad one and such a low one that it's really strange and really bad for an economy as a whole. Because many things have to close down. Many things are not in business as usual, right? We know it all. But it's affecting more industries than you might think on uh, on the one eye. It's, it's really affecting everybody. Retail billionaire Mike Ashley told to shut his shop after claiming selling sportswear is an essential service in the uh, Corona hit UK. I actually don't remember putting this article in here, but it says here, Sport Direct billionaire Mike Ashley has performed a dramatic U-turn after attempts last night to keep his retail empire open during the crisis was met with a barrage of criticism. Alright, so he, he tried to cheat the system as not being taken lightly. <laughs> it's not that important though, I should, should add. But I guess maybe he knows a little bit more than we do, because I mean, he's a billionaire. And if he's trying to keep them stores open, it could be that he knows more than we do. It could be, maybe not. Who knows? Who can tell? Revolut and Monzo refute rumors of imminent collapse Revolut launches in US. Revolut is a credit card, or like a, a card company. I, I know that for a fact. I think I even ordered one of their cards a couple years ago. Never used it though. As it launches its financial super app in the US, Revolut hits back at rumors circulating on social media that it is facing financial difficulties as a result of the outbreak. I don't really know how these cards are suffering that big of an of an outbreak or a difficulty. I'm like, 
are their costs so high for those cards? Like, what do they have to do? What's so expensive about their, their whole business model? You know, I'm not criticizing them. I just really don't know. If you guys are liking these videos, make sure you press the like button. Don't forget that. But I know the, the production of the cards is not the big the big play. But maybe the, the licenses that they have are really expensive. Because why would they collapse because of this, because of the outbreak? I mean, yeah, a lot of people are not going to be using their cards right now, but would you collapse that quickly? I mean, it's just been going on for a couple of weeks, or not even, like a, a one and a half week or so. So that would be really strange if they already collapsed right now. Airlines beg for rescue as the virus hits source to $250 billion. So basically... Global Airlines urged governments on Tuesday to speed up bailouts to rescue the airport or the air transport industry as they doubled their estimate of 2020 revenue losses, revenue losses from the CV crisis to more than $250 billion or 213 billion pounds. I really don't know what's going to be going on with this, this air travel either. I don't know if they're going to be going for the American bailout type of strategy like is America just going to buy everything because they already got their unlimited dollars? So they're going to try and invest in, I guess, the global airlines everywhere, just putting a lot of money in there because, I mean, they got unlimited amount of money. Or, hmm, you know, is it just going to really hit airlines and are we going to, you know, get really expensive travel in the future because a lot of airways are going to be closing up? Or is, like, maybe Lufthansa and, like, KLM going to be buying all the smaller smaller um maybe air france as well all the smaller airway companies and then we'll get a monopoly going on maybe they'll have a cartel and get the costs lower and messes all up with high prices or even lower prices i mean there are a lot of rules attached to it because i know flights have to keep continuing going on otherwise they lose their spot to land but i mean if, if no flights can go then then what happens and are a lot of flights still going on right now I know, I know for a fact I can book a flight, but I don't know I don't know if, if it's really going to go still. Because in the Netherlands here, the rule is you can't have a gathering of more than three people right now. And you need to be at least one and a half meters apart. But it's going to be really difficult to do that in a plane, right? And I know you can't go to most countries with a plane, but maybe some countries don't have a have a have a rule for it. I don't know what happens then, or, or maybe flight's completely disabled. Maybe you can't fly at this point right now. I actually do not know, and I would not able, be able to tell you too much about that, but it's, it's something that's in my mind right now. And then last but not least, I guess I needed to block the... I needed to de-block the ad blocker. Dow ends the day up 2,000 points as $2 trillion. I'm just really cheating it a little bit. Stimulus bill takes shape. It's the biggest one-day point gain for the down in history. That's, again, also really quite contrary to what we've been seeing the, for a very long time. A huge Dow gain here right now at 11.3%, point or plus uh, 2,113 on that one, which is really amazing, really, really wonderful. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that's, it's really crazy to see. I am really excited to see what's going to be coming up of this. Guys, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Don't forget that. Make sure you also press the like button. Right now it's like 4 a.m., but I still wanted to record one video because there's so much stuff to talk about. And tomorrow it's going to be way, way, way more. So if you guys appreciate the effort, because again, no advertisements, completely for fun. Um, and, and just because I think it's cool, make sure you press the like button and show your support. See you guys again in another crypto. Oh, finance video. <laughs>